Good evening. Welcome to Unity with Heaven and a Merry Christmas. It's awesome to just spend this time with family and with friends resting and taking a time to be interested in each other and to just say to each other, I love you and I appreciate you. And so this is maybe a little bit of what Christmas is all about. Uh, we all know the Christmas story about Jesus uh, giving his life for us so that we uh, can be guides for the kingdom of heaven to come into this earth. And so Merry Christmas to you. Uh, I trust that God is going to bless you and that he's going to renew his vision and his plans and his purpose that he has for your life. So tonight I want to talk a few minutes about practical steps in how to overcome fear. So I received a WhatsApp message from a dear person in our ministry that really loves Jesus and that has a good relationship with us. And I thought I'll read a, uh, a part of her message that she WhatsApp me. And I want to talk today about the practical way how she can solve her question. So listen to this message. Hi, Pastor Joseph. I know I'm always asking you guys to pray, but I really trust you guys to cover us. I'm feeling overwhelmed and confused. I was told that I need to stop fearing, otherwise uh, my family would be taken out by the devil. I truly have tried hard not to have any fear. Please could you, could you help me understand how I could possibly overcome fear permanently? I have asked Father for forgiveness for fearing anything and I've confessed with my mouth that I trust him. Uh, so, and this is the, the message that she sent me and I thought that message resonate what is going on in the hearts and minds of many people. Many people are struggling with fear and especially in this time of the year, uh, if you were able to earn enough money or maybe uh, get a 13th check, uh, then usually Christmas time is wonderful. Also for the people in retail, they love Christmas time because they can sell a lot of things. But for a lot of people, Christmas time is very hard, especially for people that self-employed because their income to some extent dry up. They can't work. And, you know, I know if I am out of money, something that makes me feel really well is if I can put in some extra hours to work because then I now I'll get a little bit of extra money so that I can pay all my bills. But Christmas time, usually there is not a lot of opportunities for people to work. And so if you don't have anything saved up, then Christmas time can be a very difficult time for you, especially also because Christmas time has extra expenses like all the food and gifts for the children and things uh, like that. And so I don't think God actually ever ma made Christmas to be uh, a time of fear for people, but unfortunately a lot of people are in fear. And so to tonight I want to uh, take us through a practical exercise how to deal with fear in our lives. So let me just quickly go and just set a foundation before we get into the actual praying. Now, you must remember fear is not only a, a physical thing or a psychological problem, but fear is also very much a spiritual problem. And so there's many ways how you can attack this problem of fear. Some people um, like to uh, quote a lot of scriptures or they want to pray or they want to go and talk to someone about their fear to deal with it. Uh, some people uh, maybe go into the realm of heaven, into the courts of heaven, and they ask the Lord there to deal with their fear. So it's, uh, all kinds of places where people go to deal with fear. So the strategy that I'm going to use to uh, deal with fear is not necessarily the only strategy, uh, but it's quite a simple strategy. So first of all, I just want you to believe in your heart and settle it uh, as an idea that God does not want us to walk in fear. God doesn't want us to be in fear. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, these people that always make a list of scriptures in the Bible uh, where uh, in some form or fashion God says, do not fear or do not be afraid. Uh, there's even someone that said that there is 365 times in a scripture where it says, do not fear. And so therefore God said, do not be afraid for every single day of the year. So I actually didn't go through all the scriptures and count them to make sure that that statement is really true. Uh, but I know uh, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that God talks about anxiety and fear and that we should not fear. Now, let's just think a little bit about fear. Uh, uh, fear is definitely from the devil. 
And one of the biggest functions of fear is to paralyze us. So if God has a big call for your life with a purpose and he's got a plan, he's got things for you to do, things, uh, there's a purpose, there's a destiny that he wants you to live out on this earth, uh, the enemy knows if he can bring fear into your heart, then he can paralyze you not to fulfill that amazing dream that God has for your life. And so when people fight fear, they usually also fight some of the following things, self-worth, um, you know, a lot of times when we feel fear, it could also just be a way of knowing that I don't actually love myself. I don't have a good self-image. I don't feel I'm worthy. And it's because of that, I feel, feel fearful. All right? Another reason why people can feel fearful is because uh, they feel abandoned. Maybe their mother and their father die and they feel, well, I'm the only one alive. I'm abandoned. I'm an orphan. Uh, I don't belong to a family and therefore I have fear. Uh, there could also be a, be a fear of loneliness and that's why God so many times when he tells us not to fear, he always say, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, do not fear. So God doesn't don't want us to feel lonely. Um, but uh, it is very possible for us to just be physically lonely, meaning there's not other people around us. And before you know it, then those thoughts of fear can come and overwhelm you and paralyze you. Another uh, symptom of fear is also not having or finding your purpose. And so a lot of people, you know, a year or two or three goes by and you don't really feel that you walked in the purpose, the vision that God has for your life. And then a fear creeps up. You feel your life is just kind of uh, going by uh, and you're never fulfilling what God has called you to do. And that's a real fear. And I've also suffered of that. I feel, wow, I'm already, you know, uh, 45 years old uh, and I have so many things that I felt I would have already accomplished by this time in my life and I haven't done it. And then before I know it, a fear and anxiety take hold of me um you could also have a thought of not uh, belonging uh, and also you can feel that you're not lovable you know and and if you feel people can't love you then you think well uh, people can't love me it means i'm always going to be alone i'm never going to belong anywhere and then a fear uh, takes hold of you all right now God will fight for you. And there's many scriptures where this, the, the, the word says specifically, do not fear, for God will fight for you. And so God is willing to come into a team uh, with you, to partner with you, to combat fear in your life. And so that's a wonderful thing. And so I want to tell uh, the first thing is, uh, you're not going to get rid of fear all by yourself. You're going to actually have to do it with the help of God. And so settle it in your heart. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, uh, the reason why the scripture talks so many times about fear, uh, because fear is so prevalent in our society. And, you know, uh, some people use the word stress. They say, I'm stressing about this or that. But really what it is, is just another manifestation of fear. Okay, now fear is both spiritual and fear is also mentally. And so, uh, um, uh, spiritually, the Lord can heal us. He can restore us. Uh, he can put his Holy Spirit in us and we can, through repentance in the name of Jesus, we can deal with the spirit component of fear. And so that's going to be easy. That is uh, really the biggest weapon that we have against fear uh, in the spirit would be our repentance. Uh, but in the mind, uh, the fear could uh, establish a stronghold in our mind. Now, a stronghold is like a picture of a castle or a or a, 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 a building uh, where uh, the enemy or yourself can be safe in, and that that's called a stronghold. Okay, and so what fear many times wants to do, it wants to erect a stronghold in your mind so that you can't easily get that thoughts of fear pinned or uh, evicted out of your mind. So let me read you a scripture about that whole idea. So this is Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, and from verse 4, he says the following, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every other thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So whenever there's a thought in your mind that says, I'm stronger than God, uh, I uh, can dominate your life. Uh, then that usually results in fear and anxiety coming into your life. And so the scripture says there, uh, we have to cast down arguments and every other thing 
that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So the knowledge of God is what is God saying about your life? And so this uh, uh, thought is saying something contrary. And so we got to cast down that thought. And it says they bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, meaning uh, what Christ is saying about your life, that means something. And so if the thought cannot come into agreement with what Christ is saying about you, then that thought needs to be uh, uh, brought into captivity. Uh, let me read you another scripture in 1 John 1 verse 9. It says there, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so uh, the fear that's in our lives is also a form of unrighteousness. And so if we want to be cleansed from that unrighteousness, we need to confess our sins. Now, sin is anything uh, that is not eating the target that's not from God. And so when we have fear in our life, uh, then we have to confess that sin and say, Lord, I acknowledge I have the fear in my life. Uh, I confess it's here. I allowed uh, it to build a stronghold in my uh, mind uh, and in my heart. And so I confess that. And the moment you confess it, it says that, that you will be faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that will not only be in your spirit, it will also be in your soul. Um, I got another scripture here for you in uh, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. And this very, very important scripture, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleans your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Okay, So it says here that the blood of Christ cleanses our conscience from dead works. So that means that that thoughts of fear uh, is not only dealt with uh, on a spiritual level where we are cleansed from all unrighteousness, uh, but even the blood of Jesus even cleanses our actual soul and our mind. Right? So, uh, so these are a foundation for you. Uh, fear is from the enemy. God doesn't want us to fear. Uh, there's a lot of symptoms that I talked about that fear causes. And so the way we deal with it is through repentance and through the blood of Jesus. And so now we're going to go into a time where we're actually going to deal with that. So the very first thing that I want us to do is I want us to do a prayer of repentance. And I'm going to do a prayer of repentance with you. And so I want to ask you if you can maybe pray with me in your own thoughts in your own words, rather, uh, uh, this prayer of repentance. Okay, so, Father, we come before you today, and Lord, thank you that you are dead, uh, that you are good to us, and that you are blessing us in this season of Christmas that we are in. Uh, but, Lord, today we want to deal with fear. And so, Lord, I acknowledge that I have fear in my life. I have not uh, acknowledged that I have thoughts of fear. Uh, Lord, I allowed um, uh, thoughts into my mind uh, that I uh, am not worthy, that I'm abandoned, uh, thoughts of lowliness, Lord, uh, Lord, uh, thoughts that says I will never fulfill the purpose that God has for my life, thoughts that I don't belong, uh, that I'm not lovable. Uh, but Lord, thank you that your word says that you uh, will fight for us on our behalf and with us. And so Lord, we come into partnership with you today to fight uh, fear in our lives. And so Lord, we recognize it's there. And Lord, we uh, take it captive right now. Uh, Lord, we cast down every argument now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we repent of the fear in our minds and in our hearts and our spirit now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we repent and Lord, thank you for your blood uh, that washes us clean uh, from all unrighteousness. And so Lord, now every thought, every image in our mind, every emotion uh, that's connected to fear in us, uh, Lord, we come and we take the blood of Jesus uh, with a paintbrush and we come and we brush the blood of Jesus uh, over um those thoughts and those images in our mind. The Lord, I'm thinking about the time where I was alone, where I felt abandoned, uh, where uh, something happened that was traumatic in my life. Lord, I take the blood of Jesus and I apply it uh, on that image, Lord, and I uh, erase uh, that image from my mind with the blood of Jesus. And so, Lord, thank you that you cleanse my conscience uh, from dead works and from fear. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we went through a process of 
uh, repentance and then applying the blood of Jesus. So I want to just uh, recommend to you, every time where a thought or an emotion or an image come up in your mind uh, that's connected to fear, then all you do is just take uh, the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus on that. And it's like a light that you shine on a film and that film then becomes black because uh, it loses its information. And so in the same way, your mind loses the information that gave that fear a stronghold in your mind when you apply the light of the blood of Jesus on your mind. So every single time, especially in the night season or when you feel sick or you're alone and a thought of fear starts to creep up, then you need to say, okay, Lord, I recognize this thought is in my mind. I'm the one that allowed it to be there. I'm guilty of that. And so there it is. I'm recognizing, I'm confessing it. And so, Lord, now I take the blood of Jesus and I apply it onto that thought, on that image, on that feeling, on that emotion. And then you're going to see how God is going to be faithful to uh, wash you and to cleanse you uh, from that uh, thought in your mind. Okay. Now, uh, we went through that process. Now, I, I, I want to say what I just did and what we just prayed about, uh, that is a little bit of a process. And so it's going to maybe take a few evenings or a few events in your life where you're going to experience fear, where you just have to immediately go through that steps, confess uh, the fear as a sin, uh, and then apply the blood of Jesus on that thought, emotional feeling uh, that is associated with that fear. All right, so then the next thing, after we apply the blood of Jesus, is we have to receive uh, the, the, the love of God. Now, uh, yes, two scriptures for you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 18, it says, uh, there is no love, no, there is no fear in love, but perfect love costs out fear. So if you can receive perfect love into your mind, into your soul, into your spirit, uh, then that will actually cast out the fear. Uh, in Romans 5, 5, it says, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, and so the Holy, so the love of God is actually being poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So that's what we want to do is we want to receive that perfect love of God and that will cast out the fear. Okay, so Father, I come to you, Lord, and I'm uh, looking at every area in my life that's empty, uh, or that's vacated by fear. And so, Lord, I pray right now that you will pour the blood of Jesus uh, into my heart right now, and I receive uh, the 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 uh, sorry the love of God and the the love of Jesus into my mind and into my spirit. And so, Lord, thank you that your love is being poured out into my heart by the Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, thank you. I can just breathe in the love of God. I can receive it, Lord. Thank you that there is no fear in love. And Lord, thank you that I can be completely covered by your love. And Lord, thank you that perfect love casts out fear. Amen. All right. So spiritually, we received the love of God. It casted out the fear. We repented. We applied the blood of Jesus on our thoughts. Uh, we received a cleansing of our conscience. And so now what we want to do is we want to build new strongholds in our mind. All right, and so one of the ways how you can do it is you can find some promises in the scriptures. You can even go through your prophetic words that God has spoken to you. And you can write down the promises that God is speaking to you about life, about his goodness, about uh, him being with you, him helping you to fulfill your purpose, uh, the mandates uh, that God has for your life, his blueprint for you. You can write down all those promises and you, you can confess them daily. And what will happen as you confess that uh, love and faith will build in your heart uh, and you become a fortress and the enemy can come then with his fear, but you will not be able to uh, attack you. So I thought, let me confess with you a few scriptures about the love of God and about um, uh, God um, helping us through fear uh, to build our faith today. And maybe you can confess those with me. So I'm, I got the scriptures. I'm going to put them here on the screen. And then as we go through the scripture, we confess them. So the first one is in the Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. And it says, The Lord, He is the one who goes before me. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. And so the prayer that I pray in my confession is, Lord, 
you are the one that go before me. And so even where you are, just say, Lord, you go before me. Okay, and Lord, I will be with you. Uh, Lord, thank you that you are with me and that you will not leave me, that you will not, will not be for, forsake me. And so, Lord, therefore, I will not fear and I will not be dismayed. Okay, let's take another one. Deuteronomy chapter 322. You must not fear them for the Lord your God himself fights for you. And so, Lord, I will not fear the enemy anymore. I'm at complete peace and love, joy, happiness, righteousness. Lord, for I know, Lord, that you yourself fight for me. And so, Lord, thank you that I do not have to fear. Go, okay, let's go. This one, Romans chapter 8, 28, a well-known verse. We know that all things work together for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so, Lord, thank you that you love me. Lord, that I am called according to the purpose. And so, therefore, Lord, I do not fear because I know all things work together for my good, because you love me. And so, Lord, thank you that I can see, even in my mind, how you are sending your angels, and how you're working, and how you're setting up intersections in my life for things to work out for good in my life. And so, Lord, I praise you for that. Okay, let's go to, to Psalm chapter 46, 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Okay. So, Lord, I will not fear because you are my redeemer. You have redeemed me. You are the one that gave me salvation. And so, Lord, I have called on your name, Lord, and you have answered me and you made me mine. And so, Lord, even where I'm standing today, Lord, I just receive the embrace of the Father as you put your arms around me and you hold me, Lord. And I declare, Lord, you are my God, you are my refuge, my strength, and Lord, you are very present. It means you are right here with me right now, and you are helping me. So, Lord, thank you that even if I go through trouble, Lord, that you are present to help me. I love you so very much. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. So, Lord, I take this hand of mine and I put it in your hand today. And, Lord, thank you that you are holding my hand today. Lord, thank you that I can hear your voice speaking to me as a father and you're saying to me, Fear not, I will help you. And so, Lord, I receive your help right now. Thank you very much. All right, um, Psalm 18 verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. And so, Lord, thank you that you are that fortress. You are that rock, Lord, and that you are the one that deliver me. Lord, I just step into your stronghold, into the fortress who is you. And so, God, thank you that you strengthen me and that I can put my trust in you, Lord. I say, I will trust you. <clears throat> Here's an awesome verse from Haggai chapter 2. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. And so the Lord gave us a covenant that you will give us his spirit. You will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Uh, that you will give us a new heart. And that his spirit will write his laws on our heart. And so Lord... Thank you that your Holy Spirit remains in us. And because the Holy Spirit is in us, I will not fear. And I, I remember when I was smaller, I would sometimes start to pray in tongues. And then that reminds me that the Holy Spirit is still in me. And then that helped me not to fear. All right, I'm going to read one more scripture. And that's in Luke chapter 12, verse 7. This is the very words of Jesus. So Jesus says, The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. And so, Lord, thank you that you know everything about me, even though the number of the hairs on my head. And Lord, therefore, I will not fear. Thank you that I'm valuable to you, that I'm even more valuable to, uh, than sparrows. And you take good care of the sparrows, and so therefore you will take good care of me also. Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you that you are a good father to me. Amen. Awesome. I hope this encourages you 
to deal with fear. Remember the first time a thought of fear or an emotion of fear comes into your life immediately. Go into repentance mode, apply the blood of Jesus, receive the the love of God into your heart and then start to confess those scriptures. Uh, And you're going to see that's going to build your your, your faith. Uh, You're just going to feel warm uh, and overflowing with the love of God in your in your heart, uh, and then you know you're not facing this by yourself. God is fighting with you and He's helping you to live in victory. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas.